Hey, how's it going? Nick here, and today is part two of my current back and biceps routine. Now, you might be thinking, part two? What is this? Well, I did mention in my initial video to this series that I train each body part twice a week, and that on one day, I tried to prioritize strength, and the other, I tried to prioritize hypertrophy. I find that this current routine fits me quite well, but the overall concept is also suitable to most people trying to build muscle and strength. You'll notice that I try to make these splits complementary to one another. For instance, last week I did pull-ups, so for the second back day, I'll do pull-downs. This ensures that I can fit in all the exercises of my preference into my routine. As I said before, to achieve these goals, I need to apply the principle of progressive overload and getting quality reps in by establishing a mind-muscle connection. So it's important to leave ego at the door and perform the exercise properly. Let's get started. So last week, I started off my back workout with weighted pull-ups. Because my goal in that session with strength, I worked on the lower end of the rep range and did a typical 5x5 five five workout. Well, today I started out with V-bar pulldowns because I'm already doing wide grip pull-ups. Now, there's a case to be made that close grip pulldowns help target the development of the lower portion of your lats. Uh, for me, this is just a matter of preference. It's important to remember that ultimately this is a pulldown movement, so whatever grip you choose, you'll still target your lats if done properly. Don't get too hung up on the variation, otherwise you'll never start your workout. Instead, focus Focus on the form. Notice that I have a slight arch in my back and that I am contracting my lats to pull the bar down to my chest. Not my stomach, my chest. My main concern is inducing hypertrophy and to do that I need to get a sufficient amount of volume. This volume comes in the form of moderate weight trained in the 8-10 to 10 rep range for 4 sets and since the back is a large muscle group it can handle quite a bit of volume. Next I moved on to a rowing exercise. Now normally I do t-bar rows, however this gym doesn't have that machine but that's okay because during the pandemic, I kind of fell in love with performing body weight workouts, and what do you know? I stumbled on the inverted row. Now you can do this in two variations, rope or bar. I chose the bar and I went for three sets of eight because... Well, quite frankly, that's all I could do with a good form. If you want to make this workout harder, try adjusting the angle from where you pull. The more parallel you are to the ground, the harder this workout will be because the pull of gravity will be directly perpendicular to your body. With that said, it's become a workout I've found quite challenging since I also need to stabilize myself and I find that adds another dimension of strength. That doesn't mean I've given up completely on T-bar rows because it's still a fantastic exercise to build thickness in the back, but it can take a back seat right now. Pun intended. Next, I moved on to standing barbell bicep curls. Being that this is a smaller muscle group and that it's already being worked out in my compound movements, I chose to do one exercise for three sets of 10 reps here. Now, I made it quite clear in my first back and biceps video that you really only need one or two bicep exercises, and from there, just optimize the sets and reps. That's because this is both a small and simple muscle group. To work it out, you simply perform an elbow flexion. Yeah, you can do it in any number of variations, standing, seated, incline, reverse incline, alternating, wide, wide grip, close grip, and preferentially target one head over the other. But don't fool yourself into thinking you need to accommodate every single variation. Otherwise, you might as well just have a biceps day. For me, my three favorite biceps workout is the seated preacher curl, seated dumbbell variation where you supinate your grip as you curl upwards, and the standing barbell curl. Now, I did the first two bicep exercises in my first back and biceps workout, so I only need to perform standing barbell curls for this workout in order to get enough volume on my biceps for this week. Again, the benefit of having several variations to an exercise is so that you have the option to choose based on your preference, not to perform all of them. Moving on, I added some reverse curls for grip strength. These days, I've really come to learn just how important grip strength is as it translates so functionally into everyday activities. Normally, I train my grip secondarily through isometric holds, like when deadlifting or dead hanging, but I found that direct work is also useful. Lastly, I decided to finish off with some ab workouts. I think the core is a vitally important part of our bodies. A lot of people tend to neglect them and say they work them enough doing squats and deadlift. I'm not so sure I'm on board with that statement anymore, and personally, I don't think you can ever have too strong of a core. I'm not talking about an aesthetic core, by the way, okay? That's something that you need to work on in the kitchen. No, I'm talking about a functional one that allows you to perform complex movement. This is especially important if you are an athlete, but even if you're not, a strong core is important. For me, I have a desk job, so I find I have a tendency to relax my entire lower body throughout the day, including my core, which has contributed to back pain among other things. Working them out helps ensure that I don't relax my muscles to adopt complacency. Anyway, that's it for today. This is my current workout routine as I slowly try to 
to ramp up the intensity once my injuries heal up. I have found that working out my muscle groups twice a week is optimal and provides the perfect frequency to train while also getting adequate rest in between splits. And I mean, this workout split is nothing new or revolutionary, all right? I mean, plenty of people employ this training design. But with that said, I hope you found this video helpful. With the looming prospect of another lockdown, my goal is to help encourage you all to just get out there and train. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to follow me on my progress. And hey, let me know in the comments section about your training preferences and favorite exercises for back and biceps. While I enjoy making these videos on a personal level, my ultimate goal is to impart advice from both my knowledge and experience so that you can achieve your fitness goals, whatever they may be, and avoid the mistakes I made. But you know the deal. Until next time, stay safe. See you next Tuesday.